Καλησπέρα, καλώ ήρθατε σε μια ακόμη βόλτα με τον Μπούτ. Σα ζητώ συγγνώμη εκ μέρου του γιατί έλειψε για τι καλοκαιρινέ του διακοπέ. Αλλά επιστρέφει δρυμύτερο με τον καλύτερο καλεσμένο που θα μπορούσαμε να έχουμε. Καλωσορίζουμε τον προπονητή τη εθνική μα ομάδα, Γκουστάβο Πογέτ. Μισό Πογέτ, it's very nice to have you here. Great to meet you. We are delighted to meet you. Μπούτ is delighted to meet you. Hello. I'm pretty sure about it. You Hello. won't tell, but I'm yes. pretty sure. So, I always wanted to ask a Uruguayan, what is it with you, your people, and us Greeks? Uh, it seems like you like us a lot. <laughs> it seems like you love our culture, our civilization, although we live a thousand miles apart. Yes, I, um, let's say first, I think we are quite similar. I'm not, not 100%, but uh, there is plenty of things that we are similar, the way of living, The sea always next. We have the one of the biggest coasts in in Uruguay. Um, the passion for football, definitely. I mean, it's, it's tremendous. The way we live, very calm, uh, slow pacing. Slow, always slow. In my first word in English, it was avrio. So I know it's everything tomorrow uh, because we are like that. It's something on us. Even when you play football, you know the ball goes out, and the first thing you say to the players, calm down, easy. Don't go quick, you know. It took me a while. Do you so like I... that sort of football? No, no. I I used to, but then I went to England, and it's all quick. But it's, it's funny that also the flag, we commented the flag. Yes, with the stripes. Similar. So there is plenty of things, even if we are apart. The language is the only thing that separates completely. Uh, but apart from that, we are. Have we you are learned any Greek words? Well, uh, me, I promised myself that if I renew contract, and this is big news, by the way. If I renew contract, I, I'm getting a teacher because I try on my own. I try on um, apps, you know, and now that you can use. Eh. So do, do you eh. think that you will be needing a teacher? I hope. I hope. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes you have a relation. It's not, you know, depend on <laughs> or you. It depends on the other side. But uh, uh, the idea is to see if we can continue this you know, situation that we're growing up, we're getting better, and we're going to stay fantastic. Obviously, first for me, the most important is to achieve the uh, objectives. Yeah? I'm, a, I'm a coach that maybe people will look at my numbers and we say, it's okay. But for me, the most important is, what did they ask me? You know, I let go to my first job, Brighton. What did they ask me? Get up from the third division to the second. And you did? And I did. You know, like, uh, stay in the second division. I will stay. So that, that's the kind of uh, life. The only place that probably I didn't achieve my objective, it was in Betis. Now, I was three months in there. <laughs> I didn't have the time, no? And I don't know, I cannot say if I was achieving or not. I'm not the kind of coach that say, yeah, if I was staying, yes. will we finish top? I don't know. But the rest of the places, they were, uh, I would say in all of the rest, everything they asked me for, somehow I achieved it, which is important for me. During your first spell here in Athens, in Greece, as an IAC manager, how did you find Greek football and how did you find life here in Greece? Life was, uh, was very easy, like I said, because we are similar. The kind of, uh, the, you know, the adaptation it was very quick. Football was a little bit slow. I was coming from England, okay? So the, it was slow, especially certain games. But the most important thing for me was the first game. You know, I, I got the job on a Thursday night. We trained Friday and Saturday, and Sunday we were playing away at Panathinaiko. Panathinaiko side, first game. And I would say that most of the people at the club, they were saying to me, you can go to the director box and watch the game from there. And I said, I'm mm. the coach. <laughs> you, don't, you don't miss a derby <laughs> down in there. And I remember going into the pitch and the flares, the, the green, because we were away, and the smoke and the atmosphere. And, Straight away, you start feeling the passion of uh, Greek football, and and it was an easy, easy adaptation for me. And what about the result? Nearly. Was it nearly? Not bad. I was not from bad home. For we first take game. it. Not bad. Especially because we beat them in the way back, so in a, a home after in Oak. And after that first spell, what did it take, if it took anything, to persuade you to come back here in Greece for the national team? Well, it was it was uh, many coincidences. It was a coincidence for me to get the job. You know. You need to be in the right place at the right time. I met the right people. I knew what I will get in terms of uh, the press, in terms of the people, in terms of the politics. In you terms were sort of, of prepared. I was completely prepared. It was that, that was the easiest part. So 
because when I left, I felt that he worked very well, my character with a Greek player. I thought, okay, this is a, a good chance for me to come back. And did you see any progress regarding Greek football between these two spells of yours? I, I, th I, think there are the years? I think there are teams that are very strong now. If, if I compare the teams, uh, you know, and the, the quality of the players or the quantity of quality players, uh, you know, nowadays you see the squad of Ayek and it's, it's really impressive. So there are things that they improve. Then uh, there is other things and it's natural. In Uruguay we are the same. We like uh, the old-fashioned way, yes. you know, always the old-fashioned. So I assume that uh, you have a pretty much good opinion regarding the quality of Greek footballers and the work ethics of the Greek footballers. Yes, never a problem. Never a problem. I know uh, in, what, in which situation you need to be very strict, and I am, I can promise you that. You know, we have, we got certain rules uh, that we like to respect. I think the players, uh, they need that and they like when there is certain rules to follow. Um, then I, I know when, and I say we because I feel part now, Chris, we kind of relax a little bit, you know, depending on the game and I need to be a little bit stronger. So the, let, let's say that, yeah, uh, it's been nearly two years, one year and seven months already. That, Time goes past very quickly, so. But we are we are in a better position, and I'm sure that if we achieve the objective, it's going to be even better. What's your opinion on Greek football administration? We have a term here. Hmm. You surely have heard of it: toxicity. <laughs> and I think that against your good intentions, you have even been part of it or victim of it. This toxicity. True, true. Look, I I know the situation. I and I don't. I'm not the kind of person that I get away from the, the question. I, I would love, and I said it many times, and I said it in a special meeting that we have with the press, I would like every single owner, every single fan, every single member of the press, during three or four weeks, put the shirt of your club, defend your club to the end. Whatever you need to do, that's your job. Every coach, you're gonna play 11 foreigners. It's not good for me, but you need to win. It's your job. Do it. Now, when we finish the last game, Sunday, and the national team start training, I would like, it's my aim, everybody, every single one, eh? I'm talking about the owners as well, to take the shirt out, it doesn't matter if it's red, yellow, green, black and white, eh? out, and put the national team one. Put the blue one. The blue and the white, because if we achieve that, I think they're going to be two kind of meetings. The meetings of uh, internal fights between clubs, it's normal everywhere in the world. Eh? The problem here, they're a little bit more public. And then, totally different one when it's national team. At the moment, it's everything is mixed. And that, obviously, as you know, it doesn't really help. But listen, it's another thing that I'm, I'm trying to, to convince people. I'm not saying to change, to convince that is the best for us. How is that going for you, convincing? Oof. No, very well. No, at the moment, at the moment, no. But slowly, certain things, yes. You know, when we talk about uh, the traveling, when they talk about uh, the gathering, or when we talk about even the training ground. Uh, if I'm staying here, if I renew my contract, and I don't start making sure that we go a new training ground, whatever time ahead, in two years, three years, five years, or ten years, then I fail. That's part of me as well. I need to be there and I need to push as much as I can for the national team to have home. Home, you feel Infrastructure. Home. We must, we, we've been playing everywhere. And I'm not gonna say any, any country, but countries that they are not at the same level of Greek football, they got unbelievable setups. Do you see that as the biggest problem of our national team? Massive, game? massive. You know, there is no better, I, I know because in Europe we didn't have, and after 2004, five, they, they made the complex, it's called Celeste, which is the sky blue. And um, the players, they love that. They get there and they get together there and they are inside and this is their home. They feel they are playing for the national team. It makes them feel even more as a team. No doubt. And now, now, now us at the moment, I don't know how many training rounds we used in the last year. So it's, it's tough, it's tough. So let's deal with the elephant in the room. <laughs> you have just announced your squad list yep. for the two upcoming games 
against Ireland and uh, the Netherlands. You have included Constadellas. Yeah. Would you like to address all this fuss around his name for not being called for the previous games? Well, do you uh, have anything to say? Look, the, the, the problem is that uh, I am uh, quite old fashioned and there is plenty of things that they are internal that they are very difficult to explain outside, so I know it's difficult. Look, I'm going to give you a, a little head up with certain things that I was thinking. It's natural everywhere in the world, natural. Eh? It's happening in Europe right now with Luis Suarez. That every time there is a list, everybody think about the one that is not there. Did it, the one that didn't make it. Exactly. The, the one I didn't pick. The problem is I, I cannot explain all the time why. Because there is certain situations that there is about how we're going to play, the quality, the characteristics of the player. So it's not about just picking players. Characteristics of the opponent? No doubt. We're going to play over there, we're going to play here, and we're going to contract. You know, there is different things. Uh, so it's, it's tough. And I think I. I try to be very honest when it happened, the uh, Costa Fortunis one, but then I think it's, you know, it becomes. How like did you feel when he announced his retirement? Well, f first, it was spectacular with myself, him and, and Olympiacos. They were outstanding because they, uh, they told me even before I, I made the squad. So they didn't wait, made the squad, and after he retired, and it's going to be a, <laughs> a problem. We got an atomic bomb, you know, like boom. So that was very, very polite. Uh, secondly, he called me directly, which is very, very nice from a player. You know, you don't need to go through any directors or whatever, so I talked to him. I always say to the players, if you made the decision, if it's you, you made the decision and you're happy with it, I will support it, even if you can disagree or not. But it's, I like the players to make sure their decision. They normally call me a few to ask me for advice. I said, wait, wait, don't take advice to make the decision. Don't make the decision because of me. Make the decision yourself, your family. And I think the Costas knew that he needed to make this kind of decision for himself, and uh, that's it, we respect it. Going to these uh, two next games, which are your expectations? We played great in France, mm -hmm. we played poorly in Eindhoven, and we are sitting at nine points along with the Dutch? We are, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because if we go back to Frankfurt, when the draw was made, we were thinking we've got no chance. <laughs> Reality is that Holland and, and France, uh, they will qualify. Then we put ourselves in a situation now, if we beat the Republic of Ireland and Holland, or France gave us a, a hand and beat uh, Holland, then the game against the Netherlands is spectacular. It's going to be like a final. So we depend a little bit on that result. But, uh, you know, in the, in the back of my mind, I don't forget what we talked in the beginning. It's going to be very, very, very difficult. The normal situation is that France and Netherlands qualify. But we need to use all this process to be 100% sure that we're ready for March. So for our second chance, yes. needed. But now, because we, we the alternative because the of, our, of because our performance in the Nation, nation League. League. So people maybe forgot about that. It's important that we say it. You know, we got the Nation League, winning the Nation League, but the chance to play two games, one at home, that right now is against Turkey, and one extra, depending on home and away, and winning two games, you are in the, in the Euro. That, yes, is a big possibility. The qualification, eh, now it looks better because of the position. So concentration, we need to beat the Republic of Ireland. Obviously, our goal is to qualify. Your goal is to qualify, but which is your vision, your aspirations regarding the Greek national team? Maybe regarding the future, the distant future? Well, my, my, my idea six months ago, it was to try to have a plan, national team plan, where I, I'm not talking about systems, but I'm talking about the basics of the game, uh, the, the rules that you follow, so like that when the players they are in under 17, 19, 21, they get to the first team, they know that there is certain basics. Uh, also the, the way that you represent the country, but because at the end, I don't forget that we are representing Greece and we need to represent it in a, in a correct way. Uh, 
but for that we need the training and we need the home we need it to be there to spend time with the coaches to spend time the team's cold the team's it's hard and, and and at the moment that is in standby it's stop so it's difficult so I, I i changed that vision a little bit and i'm concentrated on the objective which is qualifying for the year i have heard you many times we've all heard you many times appealing to the fans to come to the stadium to cheer for the national team how much do you value this bond between the fans and the team the fans and the team which represents as you said the whole country i, th I think we're getting better i think we we are waiting all very excited for for that day that we're going to come out and it's going to be packed i mean full I said in, the, in, in, in Holland, when we played there, I, I was a little bit jealous because, uh, you know, for a team like France, playing against us, uh, we are 49 or 50 in the world, and it's 70,000 people, it's 70,000 people in the stadium, 80,000 80, people, and then we went to... Always packed. In Norway, and I didn't see any color from PSV. The only thing I seen it was orange, everywhere. So I'm really, really looking forward to that day that I'm going to come out and it's the whole stadium is blue and white. I put myself in a position, win first to convince and then we see if they come in or not. But I, I think we're getting closer. So if we beat the Republic of Ireland, I'm really expecting a full house against the Netherlands, for sure. Simplest question of all. How do you feel here, Gris? <laughs> not professionally speaking, personally speaking. How do you find life here in Greece? Is it all football, travel, players? Do you have any time for any hobbies, maybe? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, very, very pleased. Um, I just need to maintain my mentality of being energetic, nothing else. Uh, hobbies, I like to know places and I, I like to travel and see history. Uh, outside football, not a lot, but I like golf, so. You know, I've been in Costa Navarino, which is an outstanding place to go and play golf. Uh, I like to go and watch football, even if it's in, in the last few months. <laughs> it's been a little bit more difficult because when I was at Olympiacos, people were asking me about Fortunis, and when I was in Salonica, they were asking me about Costandelia. And they will never stop, believe me. I know, I know. <laughs> the other day I had one uh, coming back at the airport. He asked me about Fortuna. I said, he retired. You know, like, uh, stop it. But, uh, but I, I, I respect that because they, they love this type of players and they know that they would like to see them in the national team. Uh, like I said in previous, there is a reason, there is nothing against uh, them and the reason is particular, it's private. Today is Wednesday, it's the 4th of October and tomorrow it's match day two of the group stage of UEFA Europa League and UEFA Europa Conference League. Which are your expectations regarding our teams for Greek teams Look, in Europe? I am so happy that we are competing in Europe. Uh, last year, it was very disappointing that we got to, I think it was this time of the year, and practically everybody was out, apart from Olympiacos, I think. So it was, it was difficult because, you know, as a sportman, when, when the players they are used to play big games, they are better prepared for the national league. You know, it's not the same to have a, let's put an example, this example, Costandelias or Kuliarakis, very young players, playing only the local championship. Okay, there is big games, you know, the Derby, Aris, and, and the, the team from Athens. But playing in Europe, it brings something extra, because you are playing against uh, big strikers, uh, Kuliarakis, or big defenders, Costandelias, big names, that made them better players, I've got no doubt. So then when they come in with the national team, they're better prepared. Uh, it's not easy, I, I, it happened to, to me. I was a player that, I played European competitions, but then one day I was lucky to play Champions League competition. And then you were playing against Costa Curta, you were playing, a, you know, it's a different level. And you need to be really top if you want to have a chance. And I think now the teams, they, they're doing that, they're achieving that. And that's something that we need to try to continue, you know, and they need to get through. I know that there is too many games, blah, 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 people talk a lot. There is no better than playing football Thursdays and Sunday for me. If you give me the chance, I play. I don't train. If I were to ask your players, would they give me the same answer? We like to play every two, every three days. I, I, and they cope with that. 
Well, any player in the uh, world. I, I think the top players, yeah, they do. There is a difference. There is players that can do it, there are players that cannot do it. You need to be careful in that. So you have two options. If you, if you find the players that they can maintain a level, or if you don't, you need to change. And you need to... And that's where alternate. rotation The rotation. In. I hate rotation. I hate rotation. I said it as a player. I used to say to my coaches, don't rotate me, you can rotate the whole rotate thing, all the others. <laughs> no. And now I didn't change as a coach. I don't like rotations. I, I don't. Uh, Even working for a club? Yes. I tell you why. Playing in Europe as well? Yes. Yes. I, I tell you why. I done it. I done it in Bordeaux. Okay. I only play four games in Europe, but uh, um, sometimes you say uh, I, 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 without involving any team in, in Greece. But let's say my team. No. You you have a play which is very important for you, and you play Thursday, and you say that, okay on Sunday. In the league, I'm not going to play him because we play a reasonable, easy game because I want to keep him off Thursday. And I would say to those, it's my opinion, who is telling you that he's going to be on Thursday fit to play? Maybe on Monday he gets uh, sick and then you don't play on Sunday and you don't play on Thursday. You lost him for two games. So me, what I say is, is he fit? Fit. Is 100% never, you know. You're never 100%. Is 90% fit, 95% fit? Playing. Then we see. Because uh, that's the other way for players to become European footballers. You know, like if they can play Thursday and Sunday. Build your players. If not, they're going to be always Saturday to Saturday or Thursday to Thursday. So, but I respect, again, the other coaches. We are all different. That's good. But me, if I have the best team, I will try most of the time to play my best team. So how do you find Super League? season 23-24 in terms of quality and in terms of competition between the teams? I think uh, as, a, as, as, a coinc now. as a coincidence, coming from the Europeans, it will depend on which teams they will get through the Europeans. Because it's, uh, I, I think, going to be difficult for them, for all of them, to maintain. Because it's different ways, like I said, the one that is going to keep the same team, they're going to get tired sooner or later, and they want to, so it's, it's a matter of making good decisions. But uh, it's competitive. Huh? It's very competitive this year. I saw certain games, uh, not because it's uh, Pablo Garcia, but I saw his I team. Course. I saw his team, and I like it. I like it. Nice football. They go forward. They lost against Olympiacos 2-0, I think, and they played 87 minutes with 10. And they were attacking, and they were creating chances. And, and I think they had a penalty as well. They they re yeah, they missed a penalty. They represent the coach 100%. Uh, going back to playing or not playing, I had a few friendly games, and, and those friendlies, I, you know, people always with me, I played my best team for that day. Maybe it was one player that didn't play one of the games, it was Baldock, because we had an agreement with Sheffield United. Now, it's different if we are in another situation in the friendly in December, that you need to check all the players for the playoff. But in the previous games, every time I had the chance, I played the best team. Which is the dream as a football coach? I could say probably the Premier League, Chelsea maybe. Yeah, the highest. As a, as a player, I was the same. I, when I left Uruguay, I thought, okay, can I play for Real Madrid? You could. I was not able. And it doesn't matter. I achieve a good standard. Can I play for my national team, which is the best? Can I win something with my teams? And winning with the national team, there is no better feeling. I don't know if... Uh, you know, you have won Copa America. Copa America. It was, the, it was the best day of my life. Look, when, when you win with your team, you make many people happy, but there is a group of supporters, no? Like, a, and you close by. When you win in the national team, it's your family, it's your friends, it's the whole country, it's your school, it's your neighborhood, it's the guy who knows you, the bar, the rest. Everybody is extra happy because you were there. It brings extra. Uh, it was really special. So that's what I think that if we bring something to to Greece, whatever it is, the level that we can reach for people to be feeling that way that I felt with the national team of Uruguay, it will be fantastic. Then the biggest club or my national team, no doubt, is a name. If I can reach uh, managing Uruguay one day, I will be I will be very pleased. Quick fire to wrap it up. Best active footballer in the world? Hmm. 
as a coach. Oof. I would like to say Guardiola because he's very special in the way he set up the teams. Best coach in the world. Ah, best coach. I, I'm talking about, yes, Guardiola for certain reasons, but I uh, am an admirer of Mourinho, especially. And best player? Right now, the best player. Uh, okay, let's start from, you know, let's leave Messi out and Ronaldo. Uh, I voted last year uh, Haaland. I think it's special, it's unique. I don't think it's too many like him. Can I say Mbappé? Probably can I say the other players, but I think Haaland, the hunger that he shows to score goals. Does it ever go away, this hunger, as you grow older? No, I think, I think the only way that it gets away is if we keep putting rules to stop the goal to be the most important part of the game, like VAR, which is awful. You said you hate rotation. I hate VAR. Don't tell me that you hate VAR. I hate VAR. Well. There's no I, place for you look, in football in, in 2023. Probably not. Look, one of the things I learned when I was very little is you score a goal, you look at the linesman, and if the linesman is running, that's it. Now... You can celebrate. That's it. It's a goal. Now, you don't know. I mean, it's the worst part of football now. Everybody is waiting. Somebody had a shot from 20 yards, goes in the top corner, and they're still checking the goal to see somebody was on the line. Stop it. Stop it, please. Stop. Don't take anything away. Because you're taking the most important part, which is the celebration of the goals, away. You take all the feelings, all the sentiments. Look, I, I remember the goal. The I, think, I think it was Man City. He scored one of the games in the Champions League a few years ago. They went crazy, they celebrated. Against for, Tottenham, yeah, semi-final. And then, and then it was offside. Yes. But it was outside three minutes later. So all that exposure, all that reaction, because it's natural. Eh? Imagine the coach, I remember Guardiola, run away. And then you come back and you look like, that was stupid, really. Well, normally when you run away, you look at the last one. That's it. Is, uh, is it more uh, fair now? I don't think so. I don't. The difference now is before the mistakes, for me, it was made in a split second by a referee. That's it, now, boom, penalty, boom, give it, that's it, or no. Now, they think about it, and they think about it, and they look, and they look. Me, the only way I will use VAR is, something happened, you call the referee, you don't talk to the referee. You are not connecting to VAR, you are not. The referee goes and see the action, different angles, that's it, without stopping it without telling him. Without consulting. No, no, without telling him. Yes. Do you see? It's a handball. Look, look, it's a handball. Look, look, it's a handball. Because then you're pushing him to give that penalty or no. And the people is up in there, they are not having the feeling of the game. They are not with that, because the referee is part of the game. You know, uh, you referee a training. I don't referee anymore now, only when it's tactics. And I'll tell you why. There is a little bit of 50-50. Um, it could be a foul, but you let the game play. And then there is a little, another one. And you say, oh, play on. And in the third one, you say, okay, I'm gonna give a foul. Because you know you're gonna be a foul. And maybe that one, it was the less of the fouls, but you had to give it. And the referees are human beings, they do the same. They want the game to be played. And they leave one, two, three, and then they have to they give want one. To help the game. And now you're taking it away. They are there and they're expecting the VR to sort it out. No, give responsibility to the referee. That's another word that's important in my staff responsibility. We all have one responsibility. Take it. Don't take it away from the referee. You said that you are old-fashioned in football and you surely are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I say this as a compliment. Thank you. No, but it's true. It's, I, I, I used to love uh, football. The old food. You know, one, one thing I, I enjoyed last weekend, I was lucky enough to be in Berlin watching Buchalakis and, Buchalakis and Saliakas. Away fans. I filmed some poly fans away in Berlin. That was the best part of the game. Fans in here, fans in here, banter, shouting each other. Not the fight. The fight is out of it. I will ban them for life. But to have that banter of a home and away this variety. It's beautiful. The it's beautiful. Yes. And we took it away because of uh, politics, you know. And I don't think we'll ever have it again. But me, I miss it. 
I miss it a lot. We all miss it. I miss it. And I think it's important that we find a way to find the responsibles, put them in prison if necessary, but at least bring the funds because we need them in there. Last question, sort of question. Your message to the Greek fans regarding the two upcoming games of our national team? Uh, we're going to give the maximum. <laughs> Everything we go, we're going to give it in the next few games and then and if it doesn't happen in the playoff and, and, and the team is convinced that we can qualify and that's important for them. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Very Thank nice you. to have you. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you.